66 days reading through the entire Bible. We're in the New Testament now. Welcome to Faith School of the Bible. Well, I call it Faith School of the Bible for two reasons. Number one, Paul Trulene, Dr. Paul Trulene, nearly 50 years ago, taught me how to teach the Bible. I sat under his ministry for over 20 years. He became the founder and president of Trinity School of the Bible. 30 years ago, I taught in Trinity School of the Bible as Paul Trulene had taught me to teach God's Word. The key, he said, was to make it simple, to make it clear. He underscored something within my spirit that I hold on today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Sometimes when we come to the Word of God, we make it so complicated. And really, it's quite simple. We're in the New Testament and we're in the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, and Philippians. I want to pause for just a moment as if I were teaching at Trinity School of the Bible this morning to unlock the New Testament for you as we prepare to read through the letters of the Apostle Paul. I like to think of it like this. Again, very, very simple. The New Testament is made up of only three components. You've probably never heard that before. I want to underscore and help you get a handle on all 27 books of the New Testament. First of all, we have history. I'll return to this in a moment. Secondly, we have letters. And thirdly, the New Testament ends with prophecy. Let's talk about history for a moment. History includes the root word story. History is often written like a story. Studying the Old Testament, we read through 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, and that history was told in the form of a story. The reality is most of us enjoy reading stories, and if you are like me and you love reading stories, then you'll love the book of Acts and the four Gospels. For the Gospels and Acts are all the history of the early New Testament church, beginning with the birth of the Messiah. And remember, Christ is the head of the, of the church. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are His story. The book of Acts is the body of Christ, where Christ is the head of the church, and it is the history of the early New Testament church. Remember, the New Testament begins with history, and then it transitions from history to teaching. These are letters, Paul, James, Peter, and John, four of the key writers of the letters in the early New Testament church. Now, we're going to be reading through the letters of the Apostle Paul, and let me introduce this so that it might make it simple and clear to you. The Mediterranean Sea defines the land of the Bible and the land of the early New Testament church. On the opposite side, or the southern side of the Mediterranean Sea, is the nation of Israel. Even today, Jerusalem visited along with the rest of the Holy Land, is something many people do today. It's in the nation of Israel. As you go east and north, you come to Turkey, you come to Greece, and you come to Italy as you move west. Why is this so important to understand? Well, it turns out when Paul the Apostle writes letters, he's writing them to cities in these countries. Many of the letters that Paul will write are in cities located in Turkey. Many others are in the country of Greece. And of course, we have the book of Romans, 
which is a city in Italy. It's so important to understand in the writing of the New Testament church that these letters written by Paul were written to cities within countries. Observation number one, as we're coming to the letters of the Apostle Paul, is he doesn't write a letter to a country. He writes a letter to people within the cities within a country. Today, I draw your attention to the book of Romans. And as you look at Romans written to the city of Italy, in Italy, we read chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, a servant, a servant of Christ Jesus called to be an apostle, and set apart for the gospel. We've been studying about how Jesus is our King and our Savior and our Shepherd. This idea taught that Christ is the King of Kings is reflected in Paul beginning many of his letters saying, I am a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Galatians chapter 1, written to the country or the cities within Turkey, he begins chapter 1, verse 1 like this. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Well, I meant Corinth, writing to 1st and 2nd Corinthians in the city of Corinth. He says that he is called. And this morning, I want to draw your attention to the first chapter and the first verse of a few of these books, beginning with Romans and 1 Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God. By the will of God. This is how Paul begins his letter to these churches. In Galatians, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by man, but by Christ Jesus, who was raised from the dead. And here he identifies how God sent him. And Ephesians, Paul wrote, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will, by the will, by the will of God. God. And in Philippians, Paul wrote, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. Now, we're just looking at a few of the books that we have in the Bible written by the Apostle Paul. And when you come to chapter 1, verse 1 in the book of Romans, you see he calls himself a servant. When you come to 1st and 2nd Corinthians, you see he identify that he's called by the shepherd to do the will of the Father. He calls himself, as he does in the book of Philippians, again a servant of Christ. And when we think of the books to Galatia and Ephesians, we see again that he is fulfilling the will of the Father, who is his shepherd, being sent out to follow what God had called him to do. Oh, isn't it a wonderful thing to remember that Christ is our Savior, that Christ is our Shepherd, and that Christ is our King. When you study these introductions to these books of the Bible that we're reading through, you see that he not only teaches these things, but he lives these things. He wakes up in the morning just like you and me, and he says, I'm a servant of Christ. I've been called by Christ. I'm going to do the will of the Father today. My day is filled with priorities where God sends me out. Oh, I have such a busy day today. Uh, my next appointment is coming up in just a few minutes. But I want you to be encouraged. And I commend you for reading the Word of God each and every morning. For faith comes by hearing 
and hearing the Word of God. Whether we're studying the history or all of the letters in the New Testament, over 20 letters in the New Testament, or the book of prophecy telling us of the things that are going to come. Father God, we bow our heart before you this hour. We begin our morning having finished our prayer walk, diving into the Word of God, filling our spirit, filling our heart, filling our mind, not with rumors of war and politics and economies and, and all of the crime and all of the unrest in the world. It's there. There's a storm in our world. But we fill our heart with the Word of God. Set us in motion for every appointment we have, every person that we meet. Oh God, go before us with your grace. Keep us safe, we pray. And let your peace fill our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You be blessed today as you walk in the Word of God. In Jesus' name.